Natalie Brunel, author of the upcoming book, Bitcoin is for Everyone, joins us to break this down this morning. Natalie, great to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. I'm going to jump right in. Natalie, just for folks that aren't as familiar, just tell me how Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining, how does that consume energy, number one? Well, Bitcoin mining consumes energy in order to secure the network. So it's the one thing that you can't print, right? And so you have to expend the resources in order to pay for that energy, or you have to buy the Bitcoin itself. So it really secures the network in a way that is ethical because no one is in control. No one is in power that can manipulate it or print more Bitcoin. And so I want to touch on your points about renewable energy because really mm -hmm. more and more Bitcoin mining operations they are plugging into renewable sources like wind, solar, hydropower. And what makes Bitcoin mining so unique is its flexibility because miners can locate anywhere that energy is stranded, energy that is wasted, and where renewable energy is maybe abundant, but really underutilized like in East Texas. And Bitcoin miners can shut down in seconds when the demand spikes. So instead of straining the grid, they actually help stabilize it by soaking up excess energy when the supply is really high and then giving it back when homes and businesses need it the most. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just fascinating to hear. Obviously, when it comes to Bitcoin mining and just the generation and technology, it is a really fascinating field to, to do a deep dive in. So how does Bitcoin mining curb that demand on the grid, as you mentioned, when the use is really high? You know, I think about Texas and some of the some of the problems that they've had on their grid in the most recent. But again, this actually helps that cause. Exactly. So unlike most industries, Bitcoin mining can pause instantly. It's like shutting off a light switch. So if the grid is under a lot of stress, say in the middle of a heat wave or an extreme weather event, miners can actually power down and then redirect that electricity back to the community. So in Texas, like you mentioned, we've already seen miners shut off during peak demand and they help keep the lights on and prevent blackouts. They act like essentially like a pressure valve for the grid, which makes the entire energy system more resilient. So when you think of extreme weather, storms, freezes, heat waves, energy demand can really swing very wildly, right? And most businesses, they can't just stop operations without huge losses, but Bitcoin miners can. They really um, allow grid operators to suddenly have this flexible load that they can call on in the case of emergencies. So it's almost like a new kind of resilience tool and it helps prevent, again, blackouts. Mm -hmm. And it makes these renewable energy projects more financially viable and incentivizes us to build more of them out. Absolutely, Natalie. All right, I wanna at least bring up the fact that some critics do say that Bitcoin is actually bad and detrimental to the environment. How do you respond to something like that? Well, it's one of the biggest misconceptions. I actually dedicate a whole chapter in my upcoming book to Bitcoin and energy use. Bitcoin mining is actually really pushing the energy sector toward renewables faster than pretty much any other industry. Because Bitcoin miners, again, they go where energy is cheapest and they often tap into these stranded or wasted power sources that can't easily be transported to cities. And so instead of competing with households and communities for power, they're actually monetizing surplus green energy and proving that these renewable projects can be profitable and financially incentivize them to build out more of them. I actually was able to do a hmm. mini documentary about BitDeer's operations around the globe in places like Norway and across the US where they're using all these reno renewable energy sources. And so it's actually, it's really amazing and incredible. And I, I wish people would look into it more because Bitcoin has grown to be a top 10 asset in terms of market cap, but it uses less than one tenth of 1% one of global energy. Less than one tenth of 1% one of global energy. I want to distill what you just said into just a, a phrase and basically and ask you a question. That, so do you think that Bitcoin mining will actually continue to grow the energy system in the U.S. and around the world is what you're saying? I do. And that's actually a top priority for this administration, oh. right? In mm -hmm. energy independence. Um, and utilities are really already partnering with Bitcoin miners because they do see such value in a very flexible customer that can turn off in seconds. And as we add more wind and more solar to the grid, which I think we will, 
that flexibility is really critical. So Bitcoin mining, I think, is going to help build out the next generation of resilient, renewable energy infrastructure. And at the same time, it secures the Bitcoin network, like we talked about at the start of this. It's a technology that I think is going to strengthen both our financial and our energy systems. And it really it, it empowers, no pun intended, a lot of people economically. Fascinating stuff here. And, you know, I think the Bitcoin industry and just it's, it's so fascinating to me in general. Real quick, where can I get my hands on your book at? The book is coming out November 18th. You okay. can get it anywhere that books are sold right now. You can pre-order it, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I try to create the most approachable introduction to Bitcoin hmm. that I could. Hmm. And again, there's a chapter dedicated specifically to energy use, all of that. Well, that's all I need to hear. That's totally in my field and in my repertoire. Natalie Brunel, thank you so much for your time this morning. And really for your insight. That was a really interesting uh uh, conversation. I could I could go on with you for like another two hours about that. I really appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. I don't normally do Bitcoin and weather stories, except when I'm talking about crypto winter. And luckily, we're nowhere near that. <laughs> yeah, you, you got that right. Oh, my goodness. Well, we love having you.